in all practice, I think, being mindful, being strategic about how we use our skills, how we use our philosophies is fundamental. So the same way one thinks of love as a potential force for power, one doesn't walk into you know, an urban or a rural classroom and you know, hug every student. That's just not practical. The same way as teaching with a great sense of hate and fury is not going to lead to the most productive or positive academic or interpersonal or social change results. But if one understands, if one thinks about the power of love and the power of hate, the power of passion in one's own pedagogy and in one's own life and movement building, then one will have access to a greater range of more powerful tools than if one is unconscious of these very important forces. The most important and consistent lesson from my own decades in the classroom and also working with teacher, teachers and teacher training, and it's, it's a profoundly simple one, although it's very deceptive. People don't hold on to it. Uh, if you know it, you kind of do it, but it's not discussed in the curriculum. Huh? Is that young people respond most significantly to respect. And they respond also to the truth. And often their antennas are very finely tuned. So if one comes in to a classroom, any classroom, math, biology, history, if one comes in, an early childhood classroom where you're teaching all of it, and the early childhood educators often know this better, but the fact of the matter is if you come in sick, they'll know. If you'll come in unhappy, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, they'll know. But that's also true if you come in with a sense of hopelessness, with a sense of fury, with a sense of disrespect. I really don't like what I'm doing. I really don't love these students I'm teaching. Their lives don't really matter to me. And then, at the end of the day, if you as a teacher find out that you've been disrespected, what a surprise. If you go in with respect, with the truth, with your own honest self, no matter what you're teaching, you will most likely get it back from at least the vast majority of students you're teaching. And to me that says a lot not just about how to become a good teacher, but how to become a good organizer and a good person. It also connects this concept of good pedagogy based on respect plays a significant role in the propagation of peace education. Because for me, peace education is best actualized in the classroom when one begins to encourage students to think critically and to name their own realities. Look, it can, be, it can appear to be easy for example, for some history teachers. Ah, I'll teach a little bit more about the peace activists after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'll ta teach more about the protesters against the Vietnam War. I'll teach about the peaceful tactics used to undo the racist apartheid regime in South Africa. And yes, in historical perspectives, those are great platforms for the teaching of peace. But if we're going to go deeper, if we're going to do the essential work of integrating peace education to every field of the social sciences, to every aspect of the institutions that are education building in our countries, if we're going to do that, then we have to be more than just good historians. We have to do more than just tell people's histories, the people's histories we're talking about have to be the people in the classrooms we're teaching. And that means drawing out and having them think critically, drawing out from our students and having them think critically about the world around them. Having them name the world around them, including the parts of the world around them that are not peaceful at all. And for every student or group of students that come into our classrooms, from very, very violent neighborhoods or communities or families or incidents, moments of trauma, 
For every one of those, we have to build in our classrooms a safe space. Our schools cannot be institutions that are factory-like, focusing on production and the churning out of these degrees, each of which is attached to a number from a standardized test. Our schools have to be communities of peace. They have to be safe spaces where people can take the violences of their own experiences, personal and political, and leave them outside. And if we do that, we're bringing peace education to the classroom on the deepest and most effective possible level.